Hey guys, I want to welcome you to Popcast. This is the podcast of the Sense of Pop channel. Um, the difference between this one and the other videos that you see on YouTube is that I think the other videos are a little bit more scripted. This is a podcast, so this is a little bit more casual. The name of this podcast, I want to emphasize again, is Popcast. I think it's extremely creative. I'm kind of very proud of it. Even I stole it from someone. And uh, so that's a really, really good idea. And uh, today's topic, we are going to be talking about uh, something about Mystic Boosters. You guys knew that Ma Mystic Boosters has just been released, I think, in America, unfortunately. It is in January. Mystic Boosters, it's a full set, just full Full, full of reprints. I think so far no one is complaining about it. And uh, however, I want to just talk about reprints, specifically SCR, Secret Rare reprints. Um, so Secret Rares reprinted, um, two of the Secret Rares are reprinted in Mystic Boosters. And I just want to, maybe the topic here is, should Secret Rare be reprinted? I'm not going to do this alone because I think there's a little bit too much. I don't want to talk to myself for 30 minutes. So I got together and I got my one of my um, collector friend. And he is Top Sun Goku. Top Sun Goku, do you want to say hi to the listeners? What's up, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Happy to be here. Yeah. <laughs> So Top Sun Goku has already some warm up because when we met up and we decided to do this recording, guess what? Discord decided, it's not Discord, it's uh, OBS Streamlab, the software that I used to do this recording, decided to do an update, uh, just to do an update before we can do this recording. So we were waiting and we were already warm up and we were prepared. But we didn't really talk a lot about this topic because we want, to be remain, we want our ideas to be remain fresh. So what we're going to do here, it's from me. It is going to be from the player's point of view. I am also a little collector, but I got uh, Tom over here just to get a collector's point of view. So Tom, maybe the question first up to you, should Secret Rare be reprinted? Eh, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, my, I think my point of view is, uh, you know, I think uh, Bandai... Um, can reprint them, but uh, only, um, yeah, with an alternative art. That's that's my perspective. Uh, some collectors are going to disagree, but uh, in, in my opinion, as long as there's an, a new alternative artwork, that it's it's perfectly fine, right? It's, it's just more material to collect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you mentioned that some collectors might disagree. What do you know? Do you, what do you think are some of the reasons why they would disagree? Well, yeah, I mean, collectors are. I think I think collectors are a little bit more. Um, uh, how should I say? Collectors think a little bit more about the money uh, compared to to players. I think personally, uh, and you know, if if there's gonna be a reprint, that means that this specific SCR will be more. Um, you know, available for players, which means there's lower demand. Lower demand means lower price for the SCR in general. So whether that's a reprint or the original, um, both are probably going to drop in value. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, some collectors are going to say like, uh, yeah, are you sure you want SCRs because uh, SCRs reprinted? Because if they're going to get reprinted, even though we have the first edition, right, the first edition probably going to drop in value as well. Okay. Do you know this, uh, the professor, uh, Tolarian professor? He made, he's from MTG, right? Magic the Gathering side. And he made mm. a video with like uh, graphs and charts. A very impressive mm. uh, take. He said that reprints does not affect the price of the original card. As mm. long as we know that it's a reprint. So alternate art or it's stated somewhere that it is a reprint. Because the reason yeah. is because uh, if you re if you reprint a card and the card it's uh, played more, more people will want it, and when more people want it, and uh, some of them would want to blink it out by getting the first edition. So eventually, the first edition is going to get uh, more valuable, just because more people will want it because the reprint um, sees more play. Well, that sounds logical. So, 
yeah i mean it's it's possible i guess yeah uh yeah i mean for, from a scientist's uh, point of view i would love to see uh, numbers right but <laughs> 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 we'd love to see examples of this but uh if you if you look at um i, I mean Yu-Gi-Oh, right mm-hmm. Yu-Gi-Oh is infamous for reprinting the same artworks over and over and over again you have the blue eyes white dragon that has been reprinted probably 50 times or something over the years maybe more who who knows uh and i think i think uh if you if you uh you know go back to your childhood and you're like man that 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 card is so nostalgic right i remember it from uh, when i was a kid and uh it, and really the only thing that's that's nostalgic is the artwork mm-hmm. and it's the, it's the artwork not not really what the tiny letters say below the 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 artwork right whether it's you know 2018 reprints or the 1999 original the card looks 99 percent of the card looks exactly the same so i think uh, in, in Yu-Gi-Oh you have uh uh you know those cards uh l- lots of people that that are just you know coming back just for nostalgic reasons not not really looking into value or whatever or or if you maybe not even players right if you just say like you know i want charizard right if you want to base set charizard i mean first of all you can go to base set you don't have to go to first edition but uh there's uh now evolution as well and uh and celebrations now also for uh 2021 and i think i think that's the avail the availability of these artworks is there and it's uh it allows people to yeah to to have more cards that they can uh that, that they can buy online are there so uh, I, I don't think I don't think that reprinting huh yeah maybe it does yeah a uh, question maybe. yeah when it comes to the secret uh, um, I, I don't know maybe you you mentioned blue eyes white dragon and yeah. this is uh Yu-Gi-Oh, right are mm-hmm. they are they able to tell which is the first edition yeah they're able to say it yeah of course mm-hmm. so yeah. it's easily they are able to say okay this is first edition mm-hmm. and this uh, is there like a huge price difference i, I believe so oh it's massive yeah, yeah. it's massive yeah okay yeah. if you if you go to the original 1999 uh card and it's first edition compared to unlimited i mean it's massive yeah Ooh. okay so you know reprint doesn't really affect the prices of the card yeah, yeah, maybe. But uh, you, you know, you could, you could uh, argue that if there are no reprints and you want that card, then you oh, have to it's purchase. Even more. You know, you <laughs> have to purchase the first set, right? Mm-hmm. Like, let's say there is no uh, twenty sixteen or twenty twenty one Pokemon reprints of base set. Okay, if you want a Charizard, then you have to purchase the nineteen ninety nine Charizard, right? And then mm-hmm. the availability is just not there, and then the prices would skyrocket. That's what I think personally. True. Yep, I, I like the counter argument because okay, as much as you know, if you do reprints, more people have access to it. Uh, but however, this first edition is still very very expensive. Yeah, I mean, first edition is first. First of all, first edition. We can't really talk first edition in a in a discussion of DBS. Because if you look at Pokemon, for example, first edition in the era of uh, Wizards of the Coast, so uh, from 1999 to mm-hmm. what is 2004, something like that, um, the first edition to unlimited ratio was 1 to 10. Something like that, right? Like the, the first edition is 10 times rarer than the unlimited. Mm-hmm. And so... Straight out of the bat, just having the, the first edition stamp, the card is already, theoretically, 10 times rarer and so much, much more valuable, right? But for DBS, you can't really, you know, you can't, can't really say, like, the original is first edition or whatever. You can't really say that because, um, yeah, I mean, uh, what's the ratio, right? The original versus the reprint. What's the ratio of availability? It's, it's, it's not... Uh, yeah. Do we have a number? We don't really know, right? We just have a rough DBS, ballpark number. Yeah, for 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 Pokemon, we we also don't really know, right? It's mm-hmm. an estimate from uh, from collectors that have been doing this their entire life, I guess. But uh, for for DBS, who knows, man? Yep. No clue. Yep, definitely. Um, there is. Um, we can always refer back to earlier this year where there's this huge collection craze. We talk about that. I appear in a podcast and we mentioned that also. 
uh, we did talk about this whole collection craze and one of the things that kind of fuels it with all this very very fluctuation of prices is the inavailability of information take for example the coming soon goku there was such a big uh, discrepancy between the players and the collectors because the players we think that there is a lot of them because some of us have like five six copies of them like really really good condition but the collectors they got that information that this is the first card that's being printed and they don't print it anymore both of us were correct, but we kind of see uh, that the, the outcome was very, very different. I mean, we, we discussed uh, the coming soon promo on, on my podcast. And mm. uh, what, what I said is that the, the, the price hype um, wasn't really due to the DBS core collectors community. It was, uh, it's, it's just that um, some influencers Pokemon influencers, but also Steve Aoki, for example, who has been known over the last year to collect cardboard, um, both uh, started promoting DBS for like a week or two, Ooh. and uh, and 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 so uh, like uh, the, one of the biggest Pokemon influencers, like the biggest collector in the world. So, so what what like let's say top ten biggest collectors in the world, easily King Pokemon, right, Gary. Uh, posted on his Instagram a few coming soon promos, and he written he, he wrote in under the description uh, first ever DBS card printed in very small small quantities, never to be printed again, and voila, bang, right? And and if that guy says says so in his Instagram, then you have all his following, right? The Pokemon following that is gonna be like. Oh, if uh, Gary posts about it, man, I'm sure the price is going to go up. And so all these Pokemon collectors, I guess, uh, saw an opportunity in purchasing the coming soon Goku. Mm -hmm. And sh yeah, for sure. I mean, within the week, the card went from five euros to 200 euros, oh, yeah. if not more. And, uh, and and we saw a little spike, right? But uh, the collector's community of DBS were, was really laughing about this. I mean... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. just, just like you were, right? Right? Like the players, like you. Dude, I, I, I was more like confused. In my closet, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was more confused uh, because um, I have to say I don't really understand a lot of a collection, right? So there might be something that I'm missing out. So I really don't mind if I'm sitting on a couple of cards that are very expensive by accident. <laughs> so that <laughs> that's also fine. Like a friend of mine, he has a stack of them in the pack. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I was like, wow, you're very I rich my now, pack. do you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. I, I, I also opened that pack, and so there are thirty-two. Ooh. Oh yeah, there's thirty-two copies in a, in a how was that uh, called? The, 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 uh, the, the launch kit. The kit. In the launch kit, right? Yeah. In the launch kit, you had a, a sealed pack of thirty-two coming soon promos, and I purchased a kit for one hundred euros. And you open it. And it's I like the first it. ever yeah, kit I, I for it. Dragon Ball Super card game. Yeah, I mean, I, I wanted to purchase two, but uh, yeah, there were two available. And by the time I purchased it, there was only one. And I was mm. like, dude, I don't want a, I don't want a sealed cardboard box. Right? Can you I, send I, it I to coding. PSA? Oh, yeah, yeah. I sent, I, I sent a few to PSA. So for, from the 32 copies, I think I, I sold about uh, 10 or something Ooh. during that, that hype. <laughs> so that was pretty damn profitable. I, I think I sold, I sold uh, between a hundred and hundred fifty euros mm -hmm. each, uh, which is pretty damn good. You know, uh, that's that's you know selling one copy already, uh, you know, paid back my my purchase. And I have four of them at PSA, and I have uh, I think ten more or something in my grading pile. Yeah. I'm gonna jump in here, Tom, uh, because a yeah. lot of my listeners they are players. So, oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, hey guys, if you're listening, um, Tom, <laughs> it's actually a guy who is really passionate about Dragon Ball. Trust me. Uh, this is where we kind of bonded on our level of how much we like the card game and all these cards, the design and everything. And um, the thing that differs between the both of us is that he is more of a collector and I am uh, like a player. But trust me, if you're just talking about passion alone, 
on the Dragon Ball Super Card game. Tom, it's kind of like one of us. Yep. Um, we're just going to talk about uh, maybe from the point... Now we're going to go to the com- controversial part. The players. Okay, so unfortunately I was unable to get any other players into this podcast. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to say out my points. And guys, uh, those listeners, if you are here and you're listening and you want to let me know about your points, please put it down in the comment section. Maybe you do an updated uh, form in terms of maybe another podcast or another video uh, of in my channel to talk about some of your opinions here. So, should a SCR secret rare, which is the most rarest um, that you can buy, purchasable in, from a shop, uh, should it be reprinted? My answer is a yes and a no. All right. <laughs> so, uh, but before we go over there, let's talk about what is the purpose of an SCR. All right. Have you, if you think about it, what is the secret rare? A secret rare is basically the ultimate blink. That is the function of the SCR, the purpose of an SCR in a deck, right? Um, it is the gatekeeper for the committed people. Because if you think about this, the secret rare has a ultimate tag. Every single one of them has it. So what does it mean? That means in a deck itself, there is only, you are allowed to put in only one. Having one in the deck basically makes your strategy, if you want to put a strategy around the SCR, it's just not going to work. There are some that kind of hinders around the strategy. For example, like Cell Zeno at a point of time where you can just do a quadruple strike just like that. And also Awaken Power, the most infamous SCR, right? However, most of the decks know you really can't do it. And if you don't draw into it, your strategy is just kaput, right? If it's in your life and stuff. So you can actually play more than 90% of the games without it. Kitchen tabletop, just play it. It's totally fine. If you don't want to do that and you really want the SCR, you can just play other decks that does not need it. It's also fine. Right? This is, oh, I'm playing this deck, I don't have the SCR, I cannot do this. Uh, okay, then play other decks. If you take a look at the metas, right? I'm talking from the player's point of view. If you take a look at the metas over the regionals that just happened in a couple of last few weeks, so many decks are viable. It's basically the round table uh, meta. So, and also, there are still cheaper viable SCR that you can do. Um, Tom, do you know this, uh, the hero in uh, SCR? Secret rare, the yeah, it's pretty damn cheap. It's uh, sixty euros or something. Yeah, I think it's fifty-ish euros. And that card, it's pretty good. It is a secret rare, and you can use it in almost any decks. I don't think there is a deck that you cannot play that. Oh, right. So if you take it into no account, hmm? I had no clue. Yeah, yeah. That it was so. Uh... <laughs> yeah. So if you said, oh, I need a SCR in my deck, um, there are some viable options uh, that you can have instead of the SCR that you want. So if you think about this, right, it's limited to one piece per deck. Uh, you can play most of the games without it. You can play other decks that does not need it too. That's, that's also the option. And there are some uh, other viable SCR like the Hero in Lineage. So why do we want to print reprint a specific SCR and if and the only answer here which in my head it's because you just want it you just want it and uh, but it's just a little bit too expensive and I don't think that's a good reason to reprint a secret rare (laughs) and that's my opinion I know a lot of you are (laughs) Or if you see me on the street right now, or you are in front of me right now, there you might hit me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not promoting violence, <laughs> but can we ask ourselves honestly, right? Why are we printing specific SCR? So when Mystic Booster was uh, announced, do you know this Mystic Booster, uh, Tom? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, sure. So the whole entire set, it's about reprint. And there is two secret rare that's been reprinted. Uh, there are people who wanted um, Awaken Power to be reprinted. The most expensive SCR. They want it to be reprinted. 
And uh, usually, if you just read through the comments, like why do they want it to be reprinted? Like I said, the deck, nobody plays it right now. It's not viable in competition, right? So you don't even play it. The only reason I can think is they just want want to have it in their collection and they kind of miss out the opportunity to get one and they don't want to pay the price that it is uh, asking it for now. I don't think that is a constructive way to reprint uh, 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 SCR. Man, it's it's crazy. I really expected you to have more, uh, to lean more towards the reprints. Gameplay, right, the players. Yeah, I, I thought I thought that that I mean there's no you know for from my perspective right for players there's almost no downside to reprinting right mm-hmm. you, you just you just reprint whatever there's no downside for the players it just means that things is more are more affordable more available you can you can build all types of decks instead of being more limited by your budget right and mm-hmm. I think I think that it's about that right it's it's about um, you know, SCRs being out of reach, like like crazy expensive, and I, I think I think it it it's it. I mean, that's a fair point, right? It does. If you look at the, the awakened power, right? I mean, it's mm-hmm. it's impossible to purchase it for below a thousand bucks. And even if you so, purchase it, you are not going to play it. And even if you purchase <laughs> it, you, you you're not going to play it. That's true. That's true. But if you were to to want to, then you can't, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so we have, well, of course, it, it it needs to to stay relevant to the game, obviously. Correct. I I I I think I want to take the, the 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 stand for the players, but also, but what's ultimately important? It's also uh, logic and the good for the whole co- uh, community in the end. Because um, we I mentioned this at the start, which is what is the purpose of a secret rare? The purpose of the secret rare, because we still have to remember, right? We are playing a trading card game. And what are they interested in? Um, of course, to create a community to play and celebrate Dragon Ball. Yes, but also eventually it's also money. In the SCR, it's the ultimate bling. It's the gatekeeper for those who are committed. Okay, you want to play a certain deck. You can play it. It's totally fine. If you want to play it at home, you could even reprint the SCR. That's totally fine. You can print it yourself <laughs> in a printer or take a piece of paper and write it. It's totally fine. There's nothing stopping you to do that. Uh, but if you want to bring your deck that you really like, for example, if we're just going to take uh, like a Universe uh, 7 deck, right, where all Goku and everything, and then you want to bring that to the table, then, and then you said, okay, I am in. I want to be committed to this card game. This is something that I want to uh, invest my time and money, of course, into it. Then that's when you make the decision to drop that that money for the the SCR. And once you drop the money for the SCR, you are in. Yeah, I I couldn't agree with you more uh, mm. in that perspective. It's it just I mean, at some point uh, you've got to draw the line, right? I mean, if you if you want a special card, a card is special for a reason, right? It's it's special because it's hard to pull, and uh, it's not too available, and 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 you know you have to you have, you have to deserve the card almost, right? You have to mm-hmm. pay the price, and uh, if if there's no no cards whatsoever that are exciting to you that are, there's no rare cards and th- then then it then you just get a boring game in the end i mean it's not boring to play mm-hmm. but uh it's boring to assemble your deck right if Correct. it's if it's so easy to assemble it and you just have to you know with a click of a button you have all your cards in your cart of, on card market yeah this, then it's it's just not that exciting right mm-hmm. whereas if you if you have to you know, plan it out. You have to search. You have to talk to to a few different sellers, and and maybe your card shop has one, but you know the price is a little bit high. You'll go to a ne- next card shop. It's a little bit more exciting. It's 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 more of a process, and um, and totally, totally. Yeah. If you have to go through that process, you have to commit, right? Your level of commitment is way higher compared yeah. to if you just. With a click of a button, have all the cards at your door, right? It's not the same. It's not the same. Definitely. And I think I think in the end, it it it's it's um, yeah, it's um, it's it's not only commitment. It's it's uh, it enhances your experience as well. I think as a player or as a, or as a collector, the 
the the level of of difficulty is there and and it requires you to be awake and to to put you know put put energy into it put yeah. uh, put attention put uh, yeah you, uh, you brought up such uh, a good point it's important Tom. you you really brought up such a good point because because what we need to also understand is that this game itself it is not just um, the, whatever you play on the table, because because we still have to factor in that we are all humans, right? There is a part of this game that is outside of what we are playing, or what we sleeves up, what uh, how we handle the strategy. For example, if we just take this whole rarity uh, down a notch, and we are not going to talk about secret rare, we're just going to talk about common foil. People will buy common foil for their favorite deck. And what is the reason? It does the exact same thing as a non-foil card. But people just want it. And that is the human factor here, right? You just feel more uh, proud of your deck. Have you met people who their decks are not foil out? I'm not saying that, you know, they're not committed and stuff like that. But you can see that they are not... And you can see that people who are very committed or they're very passionate, their decks... The decks, their favorite decks are all foiled out properly. That is the human factor here. That has nothing to do, it doesn't affect the gameplay, but it's just so, um, we we need to consider that too. And I would say, SCR, it's around that level. But, right now, what I'm going to do yeah. here is, Tom? Yeah no uh yeah no I was uh, I was gonna give a counter argument to, to that entire idea is of of course from uh, from a standpoint of of Bandai they like you said they are I mean, they're they're a business right they need to make profit they need to make money mm-hmm. and uh, in order to do so they need to to sell products right and if uh, if uh, all the products they're gonna sell uh, you know have a pool rate uh, I mean an SCR pool rate of one in 12 boxes or 18 boxes or 24 boxes for uh, Destroyer Kings, then, uh, you know, players or collectors might get discouraged and uh, stop collecting or playing altogether because it's uh, it's becoming too expensive to get the SCR. And so, in a way, Bandai, there's an incentive to just, you know, give the players what they want, give the collectors what they want. They want more SCRs, let's give them SCRs, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so, so there is definitely a balance that is that is required. You want the the cards still to be special enough for the for the people to become commit committed and, and passionate about the card game. They they need to be engaged, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but there is definitely a balance where uh, cards still need to be somewhat available. And I think I think that's what started the entire reprint thing uh, altogether. Is yep. um, is uh, between October and December 2020, yeah, collectors, or not really collectors, I guess, uh, scalpers were, uh, you know, going to all the stores and buying up all the booster boxes to sell for higher prices later. So there was no availability, and uh, and that's where the balance tipped towards the reprints. Uh, unfortunately, it took them a year to reprint, uh, you know, BT11 and BT10 and BT11 that's that mm-hmm. kind of defeated the point but uh but uh yeah so there's definitely a balance there yep uh yeah BT BT10 and BT11 it's it's a, they need to reprint that because some of those cards inside are are, are staple so those cards uh oh, yeah. they need to be reprinted because if you play blue you need those cards. If you play green, you need those cards. If you play red, you need those cards. If you play yellow, you need those cards. Those cards definitely need a reprint because you have no ways around it, right? Every single deck needs it. Right. Yeah. See, that, that, that's why we need uh, the collector uh, and the player on the table because uh, that, that are things that I just I just don't have that uh, that knowledge, right? I, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not a player. I don't know what cards are important for for the decks, right? So... Uh, Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, to me, to me, BT ten and eleven are way, way behind, right? I mean, it's like yeah. I, I collected that thing already, right? It's it's accomplished. It's it's there. It's it's gone. It's is yeah, there any like, crazy SCR in BT ten and eleven? So BT ten, you have the Peerless Fusion Gogeta. That's okay. pretty damn uh, significant. Okay. Um, it's it's kind of dropped in in popularity over time. Because to be honest, it's not playable. Uh, 
yeah see it's not playable but uh even for collectors it's 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 dropped uh in 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 the books and uh for um for vermilion bloodlines so bt11 you have that ss4 broly oh. that everybody loves right that green ss4 broly oh. yeah that's pretty that's a that's a yeah that's a monster it's my favorite so, yeah yeah see yeah. <laughs> of course <laughs> which one could it be <laughs> Broly. <laughs> there is a series. Yeah, I'm honestly not a fan of that card. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm not a fan. Do you have one? I mean, I have. I have two copies. Oh, okay. um, just because I could <laughs> at the time. I thought. I thought. I thought. If <laughs> but, you said uh, that you yeah. don't have it, I just want to say that uh, you you're just jealous. <laughs> 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 but of course. <laughs> You are the one of the biggest, I think, one of the biggest uh, Dragon Ball collector, like just even steps alone, or the biggest name like in Europe. I think, I think, uh, as far as the, the the Instagram community, I am uh, I'm up there. Yeah. Uh, but of course, I get dwarfed by some of my friends. I mean, I, I really, literally get dwarfed. Like they, their their collection is above and beyond of what you can imagine, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I mean they they operate on a co completely different level, right? Altogether, what they can right. spend in a month is what you spend in a year easily. Mm -hmm. So uh, I know some of them are way more. Actually, they spend way more than that. So yeah. it's yeah, it's it's not even comparable. But uh, you know, on the Instagram space, I, uh, I I was able to create a name for myself over the two two and a half years. Uh, <laughs> yeah so yeah yeah and uh thanks for giving me a lot and a lot of advice on how to step my m cats and encapsulate my collection of course man. not as big Anytime, as yours if you, but if you want to, it's, it's if you want to, if you want me to help you out uh you just you just have to yeah. dm me man okay uh we are going for a short break after the break i'm gonna shoot myself in the foot by proposing <laughs> another thing regarding this uh, secret uh, secret rare. And uh, yep, so let's take a short break and we'll be back. Welcome back from the break. Before the break, we we're just talking about some of this SCR, our opinion, whether should they be reprinted? I think Tom really brought up some very, very interesting points from the collector's point of view. I also mentioned some very interesting and highly controversial point. I believe a lot of you would disagree. From the player's point of view, uh, basically what I said is I don't think that most of them should be reprinted. Maybe they should be reprinted out of necessity, but uh, there are a lot of other options. You know, you can play 90% of, of, of the game without it, and it's only limited to one piece per deck. So it's basically the ultimate bling and a gatekeeper for those who are um, time and resources and also financially committed to the gang. However, now it's after the break. I'm just going to talk about, I'm just going to shoot myself in the foot and uh, going to bring out an example which kind of would say why I think some of the cards should be reprinted. But I would like to hear from you how do, you, how do we resolve this problem, right? So for example, Tom, do you know Apex of Power? <laughs> oh no i have no clue uh, what that card is <laughs> yeah i mean of course uh, universal onslaught uh, yeah that BT2, is the second bt9 uh, scr yeah See? sure i brought on an expert guys <laughs> so this card itself it's infamous uh, because it is also a highly collectible card goku vegeta and most importantly it is the second card that has the victory strike and there are only two cards in the game that has Victory Strike, this and the Apex of Power, and the other one is Awakened Power. So pick one, either of them, it's not going to be cheap. So the Apex of Power, um, how much is it right now? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, PSA 10 is probably 3K. Mm -hmm. uh, so raw is maybe, I don't know, 600, 700, something like that. All right. So this is a very expensive card. I think if we put it around 1K, it's reasonable, right? This card. Yeah, yeah, definitely. definitely. Like around yeah, six, six or 700 is, is the lowest of the low that you could ever find. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's say around 1K. Uh, I do own that card. The problem is I also love to play the Universe 7 deck, uh, the Invoco deck. This is a strategy 
that uses a lot of uh, it's red and, and 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 blue. The listeners who are players here would understand what I'm trying to say. The problem is I own this SCR, but I would never play it. I can't. <laughs> You're wise. You're wise. <laughs> <laughs> but you know I want to because it's 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 so theme you know it's 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 a card that is designed for the deck yeah i mean uh just doing uh apex at home <laughs> <laughs> just uh, just uh print it out right i mean uh I know. I mean, what's the point? I mean, obviously, you're not gonna do an official tournament with that, but uh, you know yeah. what I mean. <laughs> but okay, what if does, for this reason, right? Because a lot of us, uh, some of us, we own cards, but we just it's beyond our level to play with cards like that. For example, I love. You know, we talk about this so many times. I love the uh, the signed freezer card. The reason why I bought a playset and I overbought the playset because I have five of them is just because I want to play with it. Yeah, so you you play uh, with four freezers and then you keep one in your collection that you never touch. No, I'm not gonna even play with a four freezer. It's it's beyond my budget to play with something oh, okay. like that. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand, you know, if we just write freezer. If that is the case, you know, we could just. But what happened is that is a SPR. A special rare, so I can actually play the special, uh, the super rare version of it. It's still okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't feel yeah, that sure. good, but it's still available. But when it comes to Apex of Power, you know, yeah, there is no SR version of that. Yeah. There is no <laughs> SR version of that. Do you yeah. think it is okay if we said if you print it, print it non foy and change the artwork and make it cheap? Does it defeat the oh, whole purpose uh, of having the ultimate blink? Because yeah. now everybody has access to it. Yeah, so I think, uh, so they did that with the SS3 Gogeta as well, mm -hmm. uh, where they did a non-foil version of that. And, and I, I, honestly, man, I'm totally fine with that. I mean, if it's it's purely geared to players who don't want to or can't afford the original SCR. It doesn't bling out your deck, though, right? So mm -hmm. uh, you're able to play, but uh, it, it doesn't bling out your deck. And so you could you could say, like, uh, look, if uh, spending, you know, uh, 60 euros to get the original is, is too much, or Apex of Power, if it's uh, 600 euros or 1,000 euros to get the Apex of Power is too much, okay, then at least you have the non-foil, and at least you can get started with the game, or you can you can actually play the deck that you intended to play. And uh, along the way, uh, if you get committed and, and, and you like the game, then eventually maybe you can upgrade your card. But... Uh, I think non-foil SCRs do make sense from a longevity point, right? If you want your, if you want the card game to to stick around, uh, even if cards you know reach thousands of euros per card, then uh, then then I mean at least that's that's a reasonable uh, option. Either either non-foil versions or alternate arts. Mm -hmm. That's that's my opinion. For me. The you know all my previous argument about this is the ultimate bling, this is the gatekeeper of the committed and stuff like that. It those those argument works fine for I think ninety five percent of the SCR. But once we reach a certain level of SCR, for example, uh, we reach a stage where it got too expensive to be played, then it defeats the purpose of a trading card game because. Yeah, there is no yeah, game exactly. in it anymore, right? Exactly. Uh, yeah. But also, this is a double-sided argument because there are some people that would do it. Like, they will slap down the Apex of Power or they will just slap down Awakened Power on the board. I always joke that if someone <laughs> does that, I would just stand up, scoop, and I'll just give him the win. I'll tip my head and I just walk myself out of the. You table. win. You win. You, you win. Congrats. Right. Congrats. <laughs> walk away. Yeah, I'll, I'll I mean, just walk away. I mean, it's in, totally in fine. Every, in every hobby, you have uh, people that are more fortunate financially compared to the others, right? And and unfortunately, it's always the one that is a little that is less fortunate that uh, that uh, gets defeated in that in that aspect, right? So mm -hmm. I think from uh, from a player's perspective this card game is has more to gain to be accessible 
than to be to have too many gatekeepers like you like you call them. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the, the the more barriers there are to start the game, the the more it can actually hurt the game. Of course, you as a core player, you have been there since the start. Yeah, of course, for you, it's it's kind of hard to to. I mean, not hard, but uh, uh, you you you, can, you have counter argument arguments to that. Mm -hmm. But I think I think just in general for a for a for a card game, it's it's better if there are uh, not too many barriers to the game. Yeah. I think that the the game mechanics in in and of itself is already pretty uh, hard for the for the average person to to get a hold of when when you want to start a, a game in general. But to having to pay x amount of money to 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 start the game, that's that's I mean that's just a barrier. Of course, counter counter argument of that is you don't need. An SCR in order to mm -hmm. to learn the game, you don't, you can actually print it out if you want, mm -hmm. if you really want to, blah blah. But um, just in general, it, it shouldn't. Be, the, the the more barriers are perceived, I think that the, the less um, uh, profitable it is for the for the card game in the long run. Yep. Um, we need fr fresh blood, right? You, you you said that in your in your YouTube uh, videos as well, right? We need fresh blood. <laughs> in the players uh i think i said it in your podcast all the time right or in my podcast right so <laughs> it's uh it's it's necessary man so yeah. Yeah. i think i think especially what you said is especially true in a card game where there's no rotation yeah every single card it's playable <laughs> We're back to that conversation of yeah. course yeah 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 every yeah single, you're right you're right yeah, every yeah. single card it's playable at every single point at every one point of time so every point of time so it's a difficult topic. Unfortunately, I think we will kind of have to end at this part, right? Which is, I don't think there is good arguments and bad arguments for, and, 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 and good arguments for both sides. I know this is a super letdown. Like, okay, why can't we have a conclusion? Unfortunately, this not just applies to this topic. I think this applies to a lot of topics, which is the gray area that we are not taking one side and we just consider and said, you know, there are a lot and a lot of other, uh, there are good arguments on both sides and we should consider them. So for example, uh, in summary, one side would be like, okay, what is the purpose of the SCR, right? It is designed to be the ultimate playing, the gatekeeper of the committed. However, when it gets a little bit too, and there are other options for you, right? But when it, like, when it gets a little bit worse, so expensive that you, even if you own it, you won't play it, then it defeats the purpose of it being designed because now this is just a, this Man, is not I'm, a game anymore. Honestly, this is just a collection. Honestly, if you if you get the card but you don't you don't play it, that's that just being a collector, man. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> you just buy the card that you like and you don't play it mm -hmm. <laughs> because uh, you like the card, man. That's, yeah. uh, that's being a collector, right? Yep, true. <laughs> I mean, that's that's basically it at a point of time, right? Then it's not a game. Take the game out. So we need to consider. I at least for me, I really don't think I have any answer uh, for all of you. I mean, that's that's uh, you know that's a healthy discussion, right? So yeah. there's uh, rarely anything that is black or white. Mostly it's gray area, right? Mm -hmm. And and I think uh, whether or not there should be SCR reprints is just a gray area. You know, you're gonna get, have people that uh, disagree on both parties and. Uh, and, and and for me honestly i'm i'm for scr reprints as long as uh, you know you know whatever whatever um reason bandai has to print gorgeous cards with high quality i'm all for it man if you look at the, mm -hmm. that uh ss4 vegeta, vegeta. reprint mm -hmm. the primitive power or whatever it's called uh you know that that reprint looks pretty damn cool man honestly it looks pretty damn good yeah, uh, I have it in my cart on a card market, and I'm probably gonna purchase it. You know, it's it's it looks pretty damn cool. Uh, let's be honest, and uh, and and you know whatever reason Bana has to to create more amazing, cool new artworks, I'm all for it. How do you? Maybe we just end with a um, with another question, which is how do you think that Bandai is handling the SCR reprint so far? Because we do have examples of it. 
Well, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, it's 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 uh, it's a difficult question in the way that uh, um, I, I'm 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 not a player, right? So mm. from from my perspective, it feels like if Bandai needs to do reprints for specific sets, then they they need to be able to make a fairly quick decision. Um, almost having the, the finger on the print button, right? Uh, like, uh, is there enough supply for the players? Um, but uh, on the other hand, you know, if, as, a, as a collector, you don't want the availability to be sky high, right? So reprints, for me personally, only with alternative artworks um, or non-foil, no-value uh, alternatives. Mm -hmm. um, so as a collector, that's that's what I have to say because it defeats the purpose of, uh, of collecting something special, right? Like uh, being a collector is uh, you bling out everything and you only collect the bling, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, or at least that's, for, that's, that's, that's my version of collecting. But um, yeah, uh, to me, they can reprint whatever. It doesn't affect me personally. So... Uh, that's that's my answer. All right. I think I will also settle with your answer, which is so far, um, or maybe think about it, maybe I'll come up with my own. So <laughs> <laughs> so my, my point is this, that uh, I think SCR reprints should be taken as something special. So, but so far, like Bandai doing it, it's it's great. Like having a product that does reprint, and we kind of look forward to buying the products, also, right? And I agree with oh, you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the new yeah, SCR, yeah. the two ones. I'm already having my eyes on them too. Not the Vegeta one, but I I don't know why I just <laughs> like the Celzino one better. But that is just oh yeah, yeah. It's oh, good yeah. that okay, we don't yeah. fight then. That's great. Right. <laughs> and, uh, but honestly, I mean, reprints, it, it happens all the time, right? With mm -hmm. the collector selection volume too, it's also just pure reprints, right? And I'm all for that, man. Yep. The, those cards look amazing. And like you said, it's, it's, an, it's a special occasion. Yep, it's a special occasion. Special occasion, yeah. let's print. Uh, let's do a little bit of reprint on the most special card in the card game, which is the screen. Right? Yep. All right, so we have come to the end of this podcast. Um, thank you, guys. If you're still listening to us, thank you so much for joining us. If you would like to hear more, let me know down in the comment section. And both of us would love to hear your opinion. Should SCR be reprinted? And if the answer is yes or no, please let us know. We will definitely be very interested to read your opinion. So if you're still listening to us, once again, if you like what you're listening here, I appreciate it can give this video. It's going to be a video because it's going to be on YouTube. A like, subscribe to my channel if you want to uh, support me and the channel. And also, I'm going to leave a link down in the comment, uh, in the description section below on how can you find Top Sun Goku if you are interested in super ultra bling, high step, uh, <laughs> BSA, BS, BSA, is it? Is it? BSA or BGS, yeah. Uh, yes, <laughs> both, BSA both. and BGS. Yeah. That tells you how much I know about a uh, collection. <laughs> uh, check out his Instagram. It's it's always on fire. And also, he does have a podcast that you can um, that you can follow on um, the available podcast. I think um, Spotify, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah right. Spotify and uh, Apple Podcast or Ooh, Google Podcast or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, guys. Um, thank you and see you in the next uh, podcast. Ciao.